Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Can you believe it's almost March? Oh my gosh. Um, I just wanted to come on today and discuss with you about my 12 week plan, where I'm at. Um, I have what, 32, 33 more days um, in this year to accomplish these goals that I set at the beginning of the year. And um, if you're new here, my name is Miss Ken. I'm an algebra teacher in the um, state of Virginia. And I love all things digital planning. And so um, I did. Re I decided that I wanted to set some different types of goals this year. And I did try it last year, but I fell off. And so I was determined to make it work this year and to, um, you know, give it another try. So the 12 week year just means that you use 12 weeks for your year instead of 52 and you set these goals that you want to accomplish. Now, the reason for it is but when you set a long-term goal, sometimes you'll drag it out or feel like you have a lot of time to um, accomplish that goal. But when you set a 12-week goal, oh my goodness, I mean, you got to be on your A game every day. And so the book talks about accomplishing your goals and habits and that you, um, you know, are consistent at least 85% of the time. So I set some personal goals, some health goals, some financial goals, and um, I'm still struggling in some of those areas. So um, some personal goals was for me to start reading, um, and I am doing Audible, but I am at least doing, when I finish the Audible book, start reading a book. So I downloaded, and I'm paying for Kindle Unlimited. I'm also paying for Audible, which goes against my financial goals, but that helps me to stay afloat because I'm really not going to do no physical books, okay? We just don't have time for that today. And so I finished the two books weeks ago, and so I started on um, reading a book from Kindle called Fast, which I really have been enjoying. And then I'm supposed to be doing two books of the Bible every month, and I've been accomplishing those goals. I think I got like four or five more chapters of numbers to read. I've also annotated um, Genesis, Exodus, and Leviticus, so I'm on point with that. I just gotta annotate um, numbers because I wanted to add that into the goal that I would not only just listen to it, but take notes and make sure I understand and apply it to my life. And so I'm excited about that. Um, keeping my room clean. It wasn't about just making up my bed, but just putting things where they belong because sometimes, you know, I mean, and my room never gets that like really junky or whatever, but just keeping everything where it belongs, making sure I'm dusting and keeping the room clean because that makes me happy. Um, when my room is not clean, even though I'll be like, oh, I ain't worried about it, it bothers me. So those goals, personal, got them down pat. Life is fine. So then I moved on to like, um, I didn't really do professional goals. And then my coworker was like, what about professional? Um, my job is pretty st um, set and I do well, but there are some things that I wanna do, um, like my own business as far as teaching is concerned and YouTube. And so I really wanted to post um, two videos I really want to do three, but two videos is all I seem to be able to get out, but I'm, I'm really working on posting more videos, and so if I can accomplish that, that would be um, amazing, um, but I am getting out the two videos a week, and I have seen growth, so I know if I could get out more videos, the faster maybe my channel would grow, and I'm, and I'm working on perfecting the videos, working on my, you know, what I want my um, thumbnail to look like, my intros, and you know what? I stopped worrying about what YouTube said and what they think you should do and what it should look like. I do what's pleasing to me. And I think I've been a lot more happier because if I like it and it, it's appealing to me and not worrying about an audience, then I'm gonna enjoy it more. And so I just threw out the analytics and all of that. And I'm just using YouTube to have fun. I hope you guys are having fun following me on this journey. Um, I, I do teach. And sometimes I put out blogs about teaching, but I just have been enjoying the planning videos. And so because I'm enjoying them, then I'll do them. So I think that that's where I'm headed right now. Um, I do want to add some lessons in there um, because I do have ideas for teaching that could help other teachers. And so I want to, you know, focus on that the second quarter. Right now, it was just, can I get some videos out, right? 
So the second quarter, I am going to be working on my lessons, and I pay for Screencastify, which would allow me to really perfect, you know, deliver my lessons, and I think my students would benefit from them as well. Um, and so YouTube is going pretty good. I've gotten, you know, new followers, and I'm very thankful for that. Um, and I really want to build a community. So if you know of other, you know, digital planners or teachers that would enjoy this video, please share. Um, and I would greatly appreciate it. Oh. And so the next came to health goals. I don't know why this is so hard for me because I enjoy it. I like it. I just feel like I don't have enough time. I feel like it's so much when you're doing the 12 week year and you have all of these goals, it's like every minute of your day is planned. And so I think I want to work on that for the second quarter is finding my balance. So with working out, I am committed Sunday through Thursday. I need to be in the gym. Um, I like the gym. I like the sauna and I feel better when I'm sweating because I work out in the sauna for an hour and my last two days have been absolutely amazing. I've been Monday and Tuesday. I feel better. I'm more energized. So I want to continue. The second thing is I just need to drink water. Right. And so um, I'm trying to get in that half a gallon every day. I mean, I wish I could do a gallon, but I'm struggling with the half a gallon. I want to cut out alcohol except on Fridays, maybe Saturdays if it's a special event. Um, I don't want to eat out. And that's why I don't understand why I don't have more money because I was spending five, eight hundred dollars a month eating out. And I don't do that anymore. Like I didn't eat out since I got back home from my aunt's homecoming. Homeboy. So um, that's another thing I cut out to eating out except Friday. So I'm trying to live on a budget. Um, I'm trying to pay off some bills. And I just want to stop and make a side note. I don't know. I think these tolls is highway robbery. I have an easy pass. And when I go to the gym, I pay 50 cent going and coming. And so when I ran out, I didn't put any money on my easy pass for like a week. So I guess they sent me a bill. Maybe I didn't open it. I don't know. Don't people say I owe them $1,800? <laughs> uh, I am going to call them today because there's no way. Oh, God's green earth. I owe you $28 and you're telling me the fees is $1,800. It's got to, Can I charge some fees? Because this is absolutely ridiculous. So I got to work on that. I had one toll when I went to my son was septic um, this summer and I had to go to Detroit and I had one toll that was $79. So I paid that last night. But this, I can't get ahead to save my life with these finances. <coughs> but anyway, I just, I, I had to say that $1,800. They got to be crazy. Got to be crazy. I'm telling people, you can staple that to my report. I die with it. I'm not paying them people $1,800 for $28 of, of, of tolls. You know, I might pay you $200. <coughs> but that's all we got. I definitely ain't got no $2,000 to be just handing somebody because I, I went, through, I rode on the street. Girl, bye. I heard I put $35 on this thing. And let me tell you, I paid for some of those tolls with 50 cents, but if you have an easy pass and you go through a toll and you put your 50 cents, it won't take it. And I didn't know that. So I kept putting the money and it was still red until somebody, you know, informed me that you got to take the easy pass out the window when you're doing it and hide it because if it signals it, then they won't let you do it. I guess it's forcing you to put the money on there, but that's a whole nother tangent. So, anyway, financially, I'm working off paying my bills and I want to save $10,000. But it's hard to save $10,000 and pay off bills. So, I was saving, saving, but I had things that I was trying to get off my back. And so, I opted to start paying stuff off and I'll work on my savings. You know, I do have a small savings that I put away every 15th on the 15th, but I'm, I was trying to increase that. But I might just increase that a little bit and just focus on getting the debt off for me. So um, I did pay off my um, my Apple Watch. I paid off my tablet. And so I'm using um, this time to like, you know, get some things accomplished to be set financially and to move forward with the things I want to accomplish there. Um, and then lastly, it's just like my digital products that I need to be working on. And, you know, it's keeping me um, focused. So those are the goals. 
and what the 12 week year is doing is keeping me like on point because one you're doing a monthly review a monthly review of your finances i mean of your goals what's your finances but you're doing a monthly review of your goals you're looking where you're weak and you're keeping track of the habits that that's going to help you to accomplish the goals and then you're able to um you know see where you can you know improve and think about it and and, and really analyze what you're doing you're like oh i'm doing great with that and then when you really look down at it oh i haven't read in five days so you know it really does help to keep a habit tracker it really does help to analyze and, and see if you're doing it 85 percent of the time for the month or the week however you want to um calculate it and then to stay focused on um you know next level so let me know what you're working on you know drop me a comment in the bottom and let me know how things are going um i'm going to do a monthly budget because that's one of the things i want to focus on for march is living on a budget i don't even know how that's going to work because i just kind of just like do so one of the things that i want to do is just put a hundred dollars in my pocket for the week so that'll be two hundred dollars a paycheck i get paid on the 15th and the 30th and when the money's gone it's gone and I really need that to be for eating, gas, everything. Like, girl, that's all you need. You need to be living like you don't have no money. And if you can't, if you don't have no money, then don't go nowhere. If you don't have no money, you just act like it's not there. And then you can take whatever's left at the end of the month and you can do some things with it, whether it's savings or whether it's um, paying off something that you owe and that you want to get down. And so that's where I'm at right now, just trying to get everything paid off down and living off of my um, means and not above my means, you know what I mean? So, saving for the things that I want to buy. But your home girl getting that new tablet. It's coming out in March. <laughs> M3 chip, 12.9 terabyte of um, storage. Y'all already know. <laughs> they don't, a, they don't a, um, release come out for a tablet that I don't want. So, we just gonna have to work that out. I'm gonna have to door dash a little bit and get that, but thank you for tuning into this video if you like it don't forget it's still february drop that black heart i love you and i'll see you in the next one